Welcome to St. Paul's on this last Sunday of Epiphany. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now, now and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name <clears throat> through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. <clears throat> o God, who before the passion of your only begotten Son revealed his glory upon the holy mountain, grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them as they were both standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, you have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could not, no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 50, verses 1 through 6, found on page 654 of the Book of Common Prayer or on page 2 of your bulletin. Let us read in unison. The Lord, the God of gods, has spoken. He has called the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, perfect in its beauty, God reveals himself in glory. Our God will come and will not keep silence. Before him there is a consuming flame and round about him a raging storm. He calls the heavens and the earth from above to witness the judgment of the people. Gather before me my loyal followers, those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with sacrifice. Let the heavens declare the rightness of his cause, for God himself is judge. A reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth had, could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Today we mark the end of church season, the season of Epiphany. Many images and memories pass by me as I reflect on the scripture for today. But perhaps most of all, I reflect on how these things sometimes seem more important to clergy types like myself than to ordinary real people. In any case, seasons come and go. I first really thought about seasons when I moved to Hawaii and early on learned that everything I knew about seasons didn't apply to Hawaii. But we come to the end of a church season. Our altered life in this time of pandemic and the time of wounded leaders has gone on now for many seasons, too many seasons. But the seasons come and go and still we're here. Yes, we're here. There's no question that today's scripture readings confront us with vivid images. And how do we picture it? How do we imagine it? Let me help us out a little bit. Some images. Here, the image of the first reading. Elijah, Elijah up in the heavens, ascending in his fiery chariot. 
passing the mantle on to his follower, Elisha. The power, the mantle of authority, prophetic authority, being passed on. And we have this vision. Was this what it was like? This literal illustration? As a child, I was particularly taken by the vision that one gets from today's account of the Transfiguration. Jesus on the mount, transfigured in dazzling light, white, with, there's Elijah again, and Moses standing beside him, his three favored disciples, James, John, and Peter, looking on, not knowing what to do with this amazing vision. I remember how many years went by, and what I most desired was to have that kind of overpowering, literal vision. I could only think in these literal terms. But as time went on, the power of literal images began to loosen within me. They became more and more inadequate, less and less tied to the reality that I was experiencing. Literal images and literal meanings came to be inadequate to express for me the power and the life of the God that was being revealed to me. One inkling of these changes came to me when I experienced a vision of an angel I was supplying at a church that required me to drive every Sunday two and a half hours one way. I got kind of tired of that and eventually found a way to move to the little town of Rensselaer. But I spent lots of time in those first few months driving on a Sunday. And there was a time, a moment, a kind of flash that came to me as I was driving one day. I can still remember it vividly. And I saw before me an angel. And the angel had a message for me. It was a message that I couldn't put into words at the time, but it was a clear message, something on the order of the message that came to Juliana of Norwich in her revelations, her visions. The message was, all shall be well, all shall be well. Now, the thing is that even as I was experiencing the message from the angel, I knew that if there had been someone sitting next to me in the car, that what they would have seen is clouds in the sky, a blue, pretty clear day, and just shapes of clouds going by. Increasingly, as the years have gone by, literal images are less and less adequate. Some years later, one of my daughters thought that she could see God appearing as the sun shone through the clouds over the Waianae Mountains on Oahu. What she saw was something sort of like this, but I think what she was really seeing was something more like this. Literal doesn't do justice to the reality. No less significant than the images that come to us are the words, the words which frame this season of epiphany. You are my beloved. Back at the beginning of the season of epiphany, we have the baptism of Jesus before us. This is from Mark 1. Chapter 1. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. God doesn't just communicate 
with us through our eyes. There's a message for us as well. Words. Words that are inadequate, just as the literal images are inadequate. Here at the other end of Jesus' ministry, those same words, the same message comes to him. He has come to the end of his teaching and healing, miracle works and signs, and turned his face toward Jerusalem and the coming end of his ministry, an end which happens on the cross. It's as if the words say, no matter what happens now, and it's not going to be easy, and it's not going to be pleasant, and it's going to seem counterintuitive, no matter what happens now, all shall be well. The seasons come and go, the generations come and go, there are highs and there are lows. We are excited about the prospects ahead, and then we are panicked with anxiety over what lies ahead. But the message of God is consistent. All manner of things should be well. We may rely on images. We may remember the words, but again and again, season after season, what is required of us is a change of heart, a repentance, a turning again. The season of epiphany for us is marked on either end with words spoken from a cloud, from on high, addressed to Jesus, saying, You are my beloved Son. The words put a stamp of approval on his upcoming ministry, as if to say, This one speaks for God and has the authority of God, so listen to him. At the Transfiguration, Jesus has come to the end of his ministry. The seasons come and go. The generations come and go. But all manner of things should be well. Though we rely on images and remember words again and again, season after season, what is required of us is a change of heart, a repentance, a turning again. Possibly the most vivid expression of this that I have known, I only learned about late in life. It was expressed by the theologian Paul Tillich in a sermon on sin and grace. He was convinced that all the expressions he had known were inadequate. He describes how we are estranged from ourselves, estranged from God, estranged from all that matters to us. He says, sometimes at that moment, a wave of light breaks into our darkness, and it is as though a voice were saying, you are accepted, you are accepted, accepted by that which is greater than you, and the name of which you do not know. Tillich found his moment of graceful truth in an image of Jesus, an old image that had somehow become inadequate, but was now transformed. Again, he writes, In the picture of Jesus as the Christ, which appeared to him at the moment of his greatest separation from other men, from himself and God, he found himself accepted, in spite of his being rejected. And when he found that he was accepted, he was able to accept himself and to be reconciled to others. The moment in which grace struck him and overwhelmed him, he was reunited with that to which he belonged and from which he was estranged in utter strangeness. Now I myself have witnessed over and over again such conversion and repentance that takes place when a person is able to hear, to hear that message, hear it in their hearts, you are beloved, you are accepted, down to the depths of their being. I have witnessed it in the despair turned to hope of a gay pastor. I have witnessed it in a dying hospice patient. I have witnessed it in the transforming power of love in a father whose daughter's death some 40 years earlier had taken him down a long road of depression. 
today, as we anticipate entering Lent in a few short days, we carry with us the most powerful images of transfiguration and of acceptance. No matter the regrets of missed opportunities nor the apprehension we face ahead, nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And indeed we say, thanks be to God. Amen. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternal begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are found on page 392 of the Book of Common Prayer or on page 4 of your bulletin. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For Arthur, Karen, Jonathan, Charlie, Doug, Frank, Lori, Kitty, Patrick, Nuris, Linda, Danny, John, Susanna, Buck, Patty, Terry, Brian, Henry, David, Renee, Arlie, Sean, Bob, Becky, Jason, and Father Jim. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Clements, Clemens, Christ Church, Cleveland, and all saints, Concord, for all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God in his church, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. Remembering this day, Jenny, Ruby, Henry, and Bitsy, we pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. 
Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. And now I extend the peace of the Lord Christ to all of those who, you, who are participating in whatever way you are in this liturgy. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right, right to give him thanks and praise. praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the Word made flesh you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ has risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. <clears throat> Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace 
and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. <clears throat> all this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, <clears throat> by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let, let us keep, keep the, the feast. feast. Alleluia. In this time of pandemic, many of us are unable to receive communion. And so we receive it spiritually. We can pray together the, spiritual, the prayer of spiritual communion as printed in your bulletin. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. Since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus. And, and let, let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> may Christ the Son of God be manifest in you that your lives may be a light to the world and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. alleluia.